I'm assuming you have read Harris's Moral Landscape all the way through. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I did too. And uh, I want you to know, like, I'm on your side. Uh-huh. Um, I believe, like, God definitely authors uh, morality. But uh, I think in Stealing from God, mm-hmm. I think you may have, like, slightly neglected Harris's argument. Okay. Go um, ahead. I think Sam makes a I had to write this down. Um, I think Sam makes, made a pretty good point uh, about pain being correlated to uh, well-being. And uh, like, again, I, I believe God authors morality, but uh, I think we shouldn't brush over the idea that Sam does establish kind of a baseline for morality and well-being. Uh, I think the metaphor he put was, if you can imagine a world where everyone experienced the most pain possible, we can at least all objectively agree that anything else but that would be better. Um, And because he has a baseline, even though it may get foggier down the road with where an atheistical sense of morality could be, even though it does get foggy, I think he does establish a paradigm there. And and there's a plane, especially since he did have that baseline. Uh, For the question, basically, I want you to expound more than you did in Stealing from God. Like, at least you can, like, in this well, amount of time. Well, I, I, I wonder if maybe we didn't explain ourselves clearly in there, Jack, because our point is not that we disagree with Sam Harris in his book, The Moral Landscape, that human flourishing is a good thing. We do agree with that. What we don't agree with is the foundation for that. Because if there is no God, then why human flourishing? Why not dolphin flourishing? Yeah, I think um, what Sam or is cowboy flourishing. I think I think what Sam is mostly establishing is like I think there's definitely like a metaphysical aspect to it. But when you get down to more or less like especially like neurons and like the way the human body feels pain, I think he does have like somewhat of a case that at least physical pain on that paradigm holds weight for something of an objective morality. This Christian student is very thoughtful with his question and he believes that God is the author of morality, but he has fallen victim to something that a lot of people fall victim to, smooth talking atheists. He says that atheist Sam Harris provides a baseline foundation for morality without God, that essentially human flourishing is better than suffering, that humanity's collective dislike for pain pushes us to act better towards each other. The problem is Christians don't disagree with that. The Bible says that God in the beginning made everything perfect. There was no pain and suffering in the beginning. It was humanity that brought pain and suffering into the world. Sam Harris's baseline is essentially Genesis 1. But the fatal flaw to Mr. Harris's argument is this. He's assuming that all humans dislike pain. And we know that's not true. There are some people that enjoy pain and enjoy inflicting pain on others. The question is, how are they objectively wrong if there is no God? Morality. Again, like no, I. Well, but why, why is it wrong to inflict pain on people, according to him? I think because when you. What if it, you get enjoyment from it? Well, I think like that's a question that, I mean, I've heard your response to this question a couple times, Mm -hmm. but I think that's definitely sort of how we would say the moral law is written on our heart. And again, I would concur with that. I think even from a secular standpoint, there is a base given uh, knowledge that physical pain. Hang hang on, Jack, because we got a long line behind you. Yeah, I understand. I see what you're saying. This is not an epistemological problem. It's an ontological problem. It's not how we know what good and bad behavior is, is it's how do you define what good and bad behavior is in the absence of God? You, where does morality come from in a materialistic worldview? Well, did I not just acquit myself of that charge and say that the argument precedes the knowledge of the atomic and molecular structure? No, it universe? doesn't. No. Not that I think, by the way, that the atomic and molecular structure is irrelevant. And it could be that we might find out that there are, who knows, pheromones or this or, or other phenomena that do have an influence on our moral conditioning, uh, this still wouldn't, to a morally normal person, relieve them of the responsibility of saying that I, I feel I know what's right. I feel that some of the things my children don't need to be told, they already know. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me interject here and just ask a question another way. Do you Whereas believe- to tell a child, you're, you go to this church, which means you'll go to heaven, but your little playmates don't go to that church and therefore will go to hell, seems to me to be an unpleasant thing to be saying. 
But yes, perhaps, that is. Maybe I'm in a minority. Then. That could be an unpleasant thing, but how do you develop? Actually, an evil thing. Let's, you say. let's call it evil, only, Christopher. That's only a religious person would dream of saying. Let's call it evil. Where does evil come from? Religion. <laughs> And, mora and you to, are answer, to answer your next question, morality comes from humanism and is stolen by religion for its own purposes. Humanism according to who? Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, who? You're saying that Hitler was a humanist? Just Hitchens. <laughs> I've lived to hear it said. Hitchens. At, in Virginia. Hitler was a Catholic. A so human. A Hitler human. Was a Catholic, a so human. Hitler was a Catholic, give, so give, was Mussolini. Give me a... How... How does morality exist both if it's just a, my opinion against them, your opinion and there's no standard beyond? Both of them had an official there's, political there's no concordat with the Protestant and Catholic churches. Both of them wanted the worship of themselves as well as of uh, God. So I suppose no evil comes and from their atheism. Third, and their third main ally, uh, Hirohito, the emperor of Japan, not content just to be theocratic, was himself a god. So anyone who says that fascism and Nazism were secular is an ignoramus Why is it on wrong? a gigantic scale. I'm, I'm asking an ontological question. I'm, I'm not, not going to be called a, a Hitlerite because I'm a humanist. Okay? I'm not asking a sociological question. Cunning atheists use crafty arguments to impress uninformed people, but they're not answering the big question. Where does morality come from? Many people get confused right here, even some Christians. Just because atheists know right from wrong doesn't mean they can justify it. They can't. Without God, morality inevitably rests on the subject. And if morality is indeed subjective, it is merely preference. And no preference is better than another, as that would be presupposing that there is a best out there. How do you discover what good is? Remember, if there's no purpose to the game, you can't say that, oh, this play will is a better play than this other play. This behavior is a better behavior than another behavior if there's no purpose to life. Understood. And there is no purpose to life on, on Harris's atheistic, materialistic worldview. I concur. Yeah, right. thank you. All right, thanks, Jack. By the way, Jack, that's good you brought that up because that is the biggest, I think, disconnect that atheists have on the moral argument. They always confuse epistemology and ontology. Epistemology is how you know something, Ontology is the study of the thing you know. Why does that thing exist to begin with? Don't let cunning atheists seduce you with their crafty arguments. Their deception will only lead to despair and bondage. Judges 17, 6 says, In those days, Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. No king, no rules, but Israel almost destroyed themselves. Do not follow that path trust god seek his face and the next time you do something good ask yourself why does good even exist if you enjoyed this video and you want more content like this do me a favor and subscribe to the channel like this video many times so we can push it up the algorithm i'll be back next week with another one this is pastor frederick this is by the book peace